Hello everyone, Wayne from the CERN Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about eclipses, what an eclipse is, the different kinds of eclipse that occur, what you can expect to see during an eclipse, when you can expect to see one from Chicagoland, and how to view an eclipse safely. So let's jump right in. First, let's take a look at what causes an eclipse. Just like you cast a shadow on the ground on a sunny day, all of the objects orbiting around a star cast shadows into space. Except, the Earth and Moon shadows are much larger and longer than yours. An eclipse happens whenever one astronomical body casts a shadow onto another, and if you find yourself standing within that shadow, well, you are experiencing an eclipse. Here on the Earth, we regularly see both lunar and solar eclipses, but for those to happen, the Earth, Moon, and Sun have to line up perfectly. When the Moon is on the opposite side of Earth from the Sun and passes through Earth's large shadow, almost everyone on the night side of Earth can see a lunar eclipse. And when the Moon passes directly between the Earth and the Sun, the Moon casts a relatively small shadow on the surface of the Earth. Only those people in the darkest part of the Moon's shadow will get to see a total solar eclipse, while those across a wider area will only see a partial solar eclipse. So, why don't we see an eclipse every month? Because the Moon orbits around the Earth about once every month, and the Earth and Moon together orbit around the Sun about once every year, you would expect to see a lunar and solar eclipse every month, but we don't. Now, to illustrate why not, let's use our Digistar Planetarium software. Looking at the night sky from here on Earth, we see the moon, stars, and planets move across the sky every day. Now, I will project a line onto the sky called the ecliptic. For us standing on Earth, the ecliptic traces the path that the sun seems to take through the constellations over the course of a year. But another way to think about the ecliptic is that it is the path that the Earth takes as it orbits around the sun. Now, when I add the moon's orbit to the scene, it's easy to see that these two lines don't quite match up. The moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted with respect to the Earth's orbit around the sun. Sometimes the moon travels above the ecliptic, and at other times it moves below the ecliptic. Now, this means that the sun, Earth, and moon system will not exactly line up for an eclipse every month. Lunar and solar eclipses only happen near where the ecliptic crosses the moon's orbit. The month before and the month after this intersection point is called an eclipse season, and it marks the time of year where the alignment of the Earth, Moon, and Sun are just right to create lunar and solar eclipses. In any one year, there can be between four and seven eclipses during these eclipse seasons, but that doesn't mean that you will be able to see any of them from your backyard. You still have to be in just the right location on Earth to view these events. As I fast forward in time, you can see that an eclipse season is coming up in October 2023, and then again in April of 2024. Lucky for us, both of these upcoming eclipse seasons will create a solar eclipse that will be partially visible from the Chicagoland area. There are three main kinds of solar eclipses, and the type of eclipse that takes place depends on the position of the Earth and the Moon relative to each other. Your exact location on Earth will determine if you see a total solar eclipse, an annular eclipse, just a partial eclipse, or no eclipse at all. The partial phase of a solar eclipse starts as the Moon begins to pass directly between the Earth and the Sun, taking a little bite out of the Sun's disk. Over time, the Moon blocks more and more of the Sun's light. Sometimes the Earth-Moon-Sun alignment is off just enough that all anyone sees is a partial eclipse. But if the Earth, Moon, and Sun are aligned more closely, the Moon's disk is just the right size to completely block the Sun as seen from Earth's surface, resulting in a total solar eclipse. But let's stop it right here for a second. When more than 95% of the Sun is eclipsed, the sky will begin to darken a little bit and you might notice a change in temperature. Animals will behave as if it were nighttime, heading home or becoming quiet and still. And just before totality, 
as the last sliver of the sun's disk is about to be covered by the moon, a string of bright points of light called Bailey's beads may appear, followed by the single brilliant flash of the diamond ring effect. Bailey's beads and the diamond ring effect occur when the last of the sun's light peeks out between mountains and through valleys silhouetted on the edge of the moon's dark disk. Finally, the corona. The sun's delicate outer atmosphere is revealed as the moon completely blocks the sun's light. The sky becomes dark enough to see the wispy streamers of the corona, while stars and planets near the sun also become visible. Totality has been described as breathtaking, magical, awe-inspiring, and even spiritual, and this is why we encourage everyone, if possible, to get yourself somewhere where you can view totality. For most people, observing a total solar eclipse is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And then, in what seems like the blink of an eye, totality is over, when a sliver of the sun's disk appears along the opposite side of the moon's disk. Once totality has ended, the moon will continue to slide across the face of the sun in a reverse partial eclipse until the moment when the moon and sun are again separated in the sky. Total eclipses are possible only because of some interesting geometry in our solar system. The sun is about 400 times larger than the moon, which would make you think that the moon is way too small to block out all of the sun's light. But the moon also just so happens to be about 400 times closer to Earth than the sun, making the moon's apparent size in the sky almost exactly the same as the sun's. But the Earth won't always see total solar eclipses. The moon is slowly moving away from the Earth in its orbit, about one and a half inches every year. Eventually, in about 600 million years, the moon will be too far away from the Earth and appear too small in the sky to block out the entire solar disk. When that time comes, all eclipses will either be annular or partial. An annular eclipse happens when the moon lines up directly in front of the sun, but doesn't block the entire disk of the sun. This occurs because of another interesting bit of space geometry. Most people know that the moon orbits around the Earth, but it doesn't actually orbit in a perfect circle. The moon has an elliptical or slightly oval-shaped orbit. This means that sometimes the moon is closer to the Earth at perigee, and sometimes a little bit farther away at apogee. If a solar eclipse occurs while the moon is at its farthest distance from Earth in its orbit, or apogee, the moon's disk appears just a little bit too small in the sky to cover all of the sun's disk. At maximum eclipse, the moon is centered in front of the sun, creating what is called the ring of fire. Now, when can we see a solar eclipse from Chicagoland? The solar eclipse on October 14, 2023, will be an annular eclipse, when the moon's disk is too small to block the entire sun. Only those people in the path of annularity, running through the west and southwestern United States, will get to see that ring of fire. People outside of that path will get a partial eclipse. The size of the partial eclipse is determined by your distance from the center line. Observers close to the path will see a larger partial eclipse than those farther away. In Chicagoland, we will see only about 43% of the sun blocked at maximum eclipse. The sky will not get dark, roosters won't crow, and some people will go through the day having no idea a solar eclipse is even taking place. The eclipse on April 8, 2024, will be a total solar eclipse, visible along a path running from Mexico through Texas across the Midwest and up into the northeastern United States and parts of Canada. From Chicagoland, the sun will only be about 93% obscured, about the same as seen from Chicagoland in 2017. And just like in 2017, the path of totality is not that far away. If you want to experience that awesomeness of totality when the sun is completely eclipsed, you can travel to southern Illinois, Indiana, or Ohio for good viewing opportunities. However, the best chances of clear skies are forecast to be in Texas. 
Some people think seeing a partial solar eclipse is good enough, but for those who have seen totality, they say there is no comparison. The difference between seeing a partial solar eclipse and a total solar eclipse is like the difference between looking at a picture of an ice cream cone and eating one yourself. And that's why we encourage everyone to get into the path of totality. Another reason for seeing totality in 2024 is because the next total solar eclipse to cross the United States isn't until 2045. There will be other total solar eclipses between now and then, but you'll have to travel around the world to see one. Now, with all this talk about solar eclipses, what about a lunar eclipse? A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon is on the opposite side of Earth from the sun and passes through the Earth's shadow. Because Earth's shadow is so large, people across a wide area, most of the night side of Earth, will be able to see a lunar eclipse. There are both partial and total lunar eclipses, but there won't be another one visible from Chicagoland until a total lunar eclipse happens in mid-March of 2025. Now, the most important question is, how do you safely observe a solar eclipse? The reality is, looking at the sun, even for a short time, can damage your eyes any day of the year. It's just you hear more warnings leading up to a solar eclipse because everyone wants to look at the sun on that day. So the safest way to observe a solar eclipse is to not look directly at the sun. One of the simplest methods is a pinhole projection. But keep in mind, pinhole projection works best if it's not very cloudy outside. You can make your own pinhole projector by using a cardboard box, some aluminum foil, and a piece of paper. Standing with your back to the sun, the sun's light passes through a tiny pinhole in the foil mounted on one end of the box and is projected on a white piece of paper in the opposite end of the box. Just don't put your head in the box and stare at the sun through the pinhole. You can also use a colander or pegboard or even spread out a white sheet under a leafy tree. During the partial phase of the solar eclipse, holes in between the leaves and the colander act like lots of little pinhole projectors, allowing a group of people to see dozens of images of the moon moving in front of the sun. If you want to observe a solar eclipse directly, you must take some extra care. Special solar eclipse glasses and viewing cards are the easiest to use. Astronomers use special solar filters on the front of their telescopes to block out more than 99.99% of the sun's light. That same filter material is used in eclipse glasses and viewing cards. No matter where you get them, though, check that your eclipse glasses are rated for direct observation of the sun and make sure that they are not damaged in any way. Even a small crease or scratch can be enough to let sunlight through and cause severe eye damage. Regular sunglasses, even doubled up, smoked glass, and exposed film do not block enough of the sun's light to protect your eyes and should not be used. You also shouldn't look at the sun through a camera's viewfinder. The only time it is safe to look directly at the sun without eye protection is during totality when the bright solar disk is completely blocked by the moon. Then, and only then, can you take off your special solar eclipse glasses and soak up the experience of totality. And, just in case you're wondering, lunar eclipses are perfectly safe to look at with just your eyes or through binoculars or a telescope. So mark your calendars now for March 14th of 2025 and that total lunar eclipse. Of course, we have Eclipse glasses, viewing cards, and other merchandise available for purchase in our Star Store gift shop here at the CERN and Earth and Space Center. So now, we just need some clear skies on the day of the solar eclipse. Well, thank you for everyone for checking out our video to learn all about eclipses today. Keep an eye on our website for upcoming events, as we will definitely be hosting viewing parties for these upcoming eclipses, as well as our schedule for our regular planetarium shows, laser light shows, and telescope star parties. But as always, remember to get out there and take a look at your nighttime and daytime skies.